going in. <sighs> so what are we na- naming our podcast? This is the slightly above average fuck boys. Is that's the temporary title? Don't know if it's um, the full on title. Yeah, um, I don't, it depends. Uh, depends where we're going with it, I guess. I I get I get nervous around naming it now. Mm. Maybe um, we can figure it out as we. Uh, as yeah, we it's like out. intelligentsia keeps echoing in my like thoughts <laughs> as well. But then I'm like, am it's I lying? Because nice I'm not. I'm not incel right now. So like, do I have to be? No, you don't. It's just a frame of mind. It's a frame of <laughs> mind. I think I'm there. Yeah, yeah. I've been trying not to no fap lately. Oh yeah. Whoa. No fap. Like I've what? been trying and failing because there's someone I can have sex with, but every time I see her, I tell her like, "Don't expect me to come." Oh, so you're going no fap while you're having sex? Yeah, because I'm trying no, that. No fap is usually when you're not having sex and you're just masturbating, so you don't, you choose not to masturbate. That's no fap. Have we started recording? Maybe we should be recording this. Yeah, we are recording this. Oh shit. Sure. Okay. Well, I'm recording this. I guess you're. Oh, recording perfect. This. Okay. Oh, yes, you are. Yeah. So never mind. Pretend I didn't say that. <laughs> didn't say what? The recording bit? <laughs> yeah, man. It's all it's all freaking natural, man. This is like grungy. It's no clean, clean television style recording. We oh. break the fourth wall all the time. This Fuck is podcast. This is meta, organic. yo. Yeah. We can just name it the Pierre and Savage show for now, too. Okay, yeah, yeah, why not? I think, you know, we found we have, like, anticipatory fans. Like, Yanis already wants to know <laughs> what we're doing. Shout out to Yanis. Yeah, Yanis. Thank you for the one guy who's feigning interest <laughs> in this. He's supposed to get on the show, uh, is what I what I understood. Really? Oh, yeah, we should. he's like, uh, can I, great show, when are you putting out more content? When can I be in one? Yeah, yeah. We're all in good time, my Greek god. All in good time. All in good time, yeah. That's a good answer. That's yeah. Better, that's what I was looking to say, but I didn't. I couldn't find the words. <laughs> yeah, man. I all was, in good time. I was going to say something like, um, I can't really give you an answer right now, Yanis. Um, need to know. We, we, you're not ready for you. We're not ready for you, or you're not ready for us. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You're not, you're no. not re- Yanis, if you're listening, you're not ready for us. You're not, uh, you're not ready for us. You're not ready for this shit. For these professionals. Is, it's just too long. <laughs> <laughs> what are we supposed to do with that? Give us a solution. This is your test. If you're listening, give us a solution. Exactly. And that'll be your interview process. Boom. There you go. That's how you get in, in, the, in this business of whatever this is. <laughs> you got to prove your worth. You gotta bring something to the table. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. You gotta do a little strip tease on Skype for us. Show us what you got. Twirl your nipples a bit, Sianis. Yo, I heard. uh, Speaking of Greeks and Greek gods, and then switching to Romans, I heard on another podcast that the reason why they have tiny dicks in those all those Greek statues is because they thought big dicks were like gross. Did you ever ever heard of this? Well, I didn't hear about this. It's funny you bring this up. I didn't hear about this in a, in another podcast, but I have a friend in Antigua who's a history buff, and he was saying that um, it was it was to like keep the population from being overly randy. Oh. It was like it was vulgar to have this display of massive dongs on the on the Roman statues. It's a distraction statues. from like the art. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, um, apparently. Wow, yeah. That makes Something sense. Something like that. Because what did you hear in the podcast? Well, I just heard that uh, the reason why they didn't have the big dicks, uh, they didn't carve them in, is because they thought it was gross. They thought it was vulgar. Ah, which, uh, yeah, similar. Probably similar shit. It makes sense, I guess, because if you uh, if you make the dicks big, everyone's just going to focus on that. <laughs> you know, like everyone's going to be looking at the dicks and not like the rest of like the way the body is sculpted and like the reason why it's in this particular posture and the expression of the face and the body language and what it's saying and all that and the uh and the artistry of whatever you probably won't be able think to you think of these things are like a masterfully crafted king kong dick on them yeah that people would just that's 
They wouldn't see the rest of the the craftsmanship. They wouldn't see the detail. I don't think, unless you make unless you make the dick itself so attractive and like that's the work of art. But, then... but that's what I mean. Like you think they would just take over the whole thing if they had like etched veins? You could see the <laughs> vast details. On the, we're looking at I don't know Zeus or something, and and just being like, I wish you could get his master schlong out of my face. <laughs> Yeah, man. I, I totally think that. I think people would just be like looking at the beauty. Initially, they'll be like, ah, oh, you know, d- dicks will just get all the attention. And then people will just be looking at it. And then, of course, you know, you're going to have those people who, who like talk about the beauty of the veins in it and like the helmet and the whatever's in it. But then really, it'll just be more of a comparison thing. And then it'll be like a joke thing. You know, people would start making jokes about how either their dick is that big or or it's not that big. <laughs> you know, I could be Zeus. Oh, yeah. Oh, Look yeah. at my Zeus dick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you think, do you think, think... it had like a pot of positive influence on the – like it encouraged sensuality? Mm. Like like it's like the version of softcore porn. It did, their version of softcore porn, it didn't pollute your brain too much, but it, it like just seeing a naked body turned you on. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's just like the statues. It's titillating, you know, just the right amount of like titillating uh, content. Yeah, I get. I would well, that be interesting? Yeah, like how it's like not the focus of like you know how porn today is just like big dicks going into it's tight dick pussy. domination. <laughs> it's more like the whole, the all, the whole of it. You know, we're honoring the sexuality and sensuality of human beings having relations. You know, it's more like. Uh, they're also like mythical s- figures. You know, they oh had their, yeah. Like, they had their role play on point back then. You know, it's like oh. if, if you if you're looking at sculptures to 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 save to your wank bank for later. <laughs> yeah. It's like you couldn't help but think like, oh my god, maybe Zeus will put a half god in my. Womb. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess they also didn't think of like maybe we like we fetishize big dicks because we're like, oh, big everything, big Mac, big trucks, <laughs> big dicks, big, big bucks, big tits, big bucks, big dicks, uh, everything big, everything extra large. Uh, maybe they cinema did... screen in your house. What screen in your house? Cinema screen. You want like what a is that? home cinema? Oh, cinema screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything big, big dicks, big trucks, big cinema screens in your house. Uh, so, you know, everything is like fetishized. Big is like better. That's yeah. the fetish. Maybe back in the day when they were making these sculptures, they were like, oh, uh, you know, big doesn't uh, everyone. No one had any money. Very few people had any money to do anything. Everyone was poor. So, uh, you know, I guess you focus on like other important things in life. Maybe you. Focused on like beauty. You were gonna die at forty, right? Mm. So maybe you just focused on the beauty of the sculptures. Whoa. Yeah. But maybe like, cause a lot of these sculptures are like Im- impressive human specimens. You know, they're like yeah. ripped and stuff. So I'm wondering if that was not another thing. Like, you know, there was no gyms back then. So maybe, maybe like a, a six pack on a statue was worth what like a ten inch cock oh, on a. <laughs> Porn star is worth now, you know. But wouldn't everyone, most people, be in kind of in good shape because you're eating like one or two times a day? You mm. know, you're not eating a lot for sure. Would and you be bulky? You know, would you be like, would you have that muscle mass? Not, not really, because that also costs money to eat. Yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, yeah. These, these were like godlike figures. The average right, Joe didn't look like that. Yeah, aspirational, like fuck. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. I wonder if I wonder if maybe like people want to be a a warrior more because of that reason. It's like the, the warriors probably were jacked, you know, like they're picking up heavy swords and shields and running around with armor all the time. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How come they were never like fat sculptures? Like, were they like fat sculptures? I don't remember seeing those in a museum. No, yeah, I feel like the first ones were like Buddha, the the, the fat yeah, Buddha the fat guy. Buddha. Yeah, that's the only ones that I can. I literally only think of that guy, but. And even the women, they didn't have like giant tits. They kind of had like nice tits, and then like a nice mm. like, you know, she's not working out every day, but she's not fat either. She's kind of she's kind of there. She's kind of that Goldilocks of like, I don't go to the gym. I don't have a boy butt. I have hips. 
<laughs> so they weren't their tits weren't vulgar either. Yeah, uh, vulgar. Yeah, I suppose. They yeah, they weren't. They weren't yeah, they were like goddesses. Your they had beautiful and... hair, you know. Um, and even the faces were like not like like chiseled. Like uh, they were kind of like round and kind of. I guess maybe ru- maybe the word. Yeah, people people were people were, were it, it was the subtlety. Yeah. Oh, I wonder yeah. if big dicks weren't as weren't as uh, valued back then. Maybe like, they didn't just, just meet generally. any black people. But maybe <laughs> maybe that was the thing. <laughs> they, didn't, they hadn't invaded Africa yet, so they didn't yeah. have any. Yeah, black there's people. white populations with known for big dicks. Like talk about That's the Romans, true. the Italians. Oh yeah, Italian people. Yeah, yeah. And also Rome had a lot of. Uh, Rome was supposedly like a multicultural city because they did colonize. They didn't. Uh, they did yeah. conquer a lot of people and they did Let's like have, have brown people there. Maybe yeah, there's definitely North people. Africans. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, maybe I don't know. Maybe it was the vulgarity. Maybe it was a distraction. They figured some shit out. They knew that people only think of the big dicks if they had the big dicks. But you know. I was thinking maybe you know like like you're saying people a lot of people didn't have money a lot of people didn't have like uh, common luck like household luxuries and stuff like this a, a certain level of comfort in their life maybe with less privileges you you don't necessarily want to take more pain in your love life you know maybe <laughs> maybe the women it's were like, like one additional oh thing God, you got to worry about that th- yeah <laughs> plus I gotta tolerate this dick like I can't kid. eat I have no food I have uh, I have a shit job. I'm going to die tomorrow, and i got to worry about having a tiny dick. Fuck. God do you think, damn it. Do you yeah. think the revering of big dicks today is kind of a sign of our progress then? Like, like if, if you can, if you, if your life's so good, <laughs> like, if your oh. life's so comfortable in other places, then a little yeah. spice would be like, oh, I can afford a little pain in my fucking love life. Uh, At least it's not boring, like, the rest yeah. of my easy life. <laughs> yeah 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 hey yeah man that uh that's why do you think that's a category of of porn is that the whole like cuckold porn that's getting popular isn't it why is that popular i was wondering about this no one has cardio to fuck their own women so they can just outsource it, just like how you outsource everything. Oh, I'll get—I won't cut my own grass. I'll get someone to cut it for me. I'm not gonna cook my own food. I'm gonna get Uber Eats. I gotta fuck my own <laughs> girl, so <laughs> I'm just gonna get uh, someone else to fuck her. And you know, I'm, I'm like, gonna videotape my, it and then. What am I poor? Yeah. What am I fucking? I got a maid. I, I can get a fucking. Oh, she's like, come on, you're exhausting here. Fuck her. Go fuck her for me. Yeah. Yeah. Go, uh, I can't. What am I? I just worked eight hours a day. Fucking, you know, I'm 20 pounds overweight. I haven't done any cardio for like six months. I'm gonna. I'm. Mean, it's just tiring for me. It's like a tedious process to even get. Uh, to even you know get a hard on and then having to do this athletic process of like, hey, that's another thing. It's like men don't get enough credit to do a lot. Of, a lot of the work that's, that's involved true. in sex. It's like a lot of hip movement. You need to have core strength, bro. You need to have like strong uh-huh. buttocks, ab yeah. muscles, like. Yeah. And, to go along with the whole, you know, uh, mental you know aspect, to, like of, kind of multitask between your torso and your hips. Yeah, it's you like a have dance like move. A body control. Yeah, it's like you got a section uh, differentiation, but also like this thing of like um, when you got it all, when you when you've got it all made, someone else also fucks your woman for you. It's not like it's also not like uh, you're not gonna be a sucker and go let the guy fuck her, and you don't get anything out of it. That would be giving this dude something for free. He's like, no, 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 hold on. I'm going to sit in the corner. I'm going to jerk I'm off. Gonna just, it. I'm videotape it. And videotape it for gonna... later. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to videotape it for later. Yeah. I was also that also maybe... shows us how, like, I like how they videotape it because it's, like, such a thing of, like, it doesn't matter what you're doing now, whether it's your daughter res- recital or your wife's getting fucked by some other dude. You have to videotape it. You can't just be in the moment and jerk off. You have to have a camera on you at all times. That's also a sign of like... Well, maybe um, maybe it's because of all the porn like, people watch nowadays. It's like people are jerking off to porn more than they're like fucking in real life. So yeah. maybe, maybe yeah. like fucking in real life, there's like, oh, I don't know, the porn version of this was better, I guess. So what, like, I'm dating you? Well, I guess I'll jerk off to you being fucked by someone else. Then, like, you'll be my porn star because that's what yeah. I like. You know what's funny, bro? The best part, 
I figured this out. This is my uh, take on something of on online dating. My take on online dating. The best part about online dating is getting the match. It it's the best part of the whole process. The whole process of going on the date and actually <laughs> it just having real sex. Sucks after that. It's downhill the best part. after the that's match. That's that's the zenith of this whole thing. It only can go downhill because when I get the match, rush. it gives me yeah the dopamine rush. And it gives me like the uh, – what's that thing when you get uh, validation? It gives me the validation, right, that, oh, someone likes me. And and uh, and then and I can just fill the re- – and then I can fill the rest with my imagination. Yeah. Like my imagination is better than what's actually going to happen in real life. And I can just make you the person I want you to be and then jerk off to you, I guess. And then that's the – It's like be- these sculptures that we were talking about earlier, that these things are like – they're other they're other realmly they're not like something you could imagine like they're not yeah. something you could predict that they're just so you could go and fantasize everything you want about this person you just got to match and this you know they're real you know they're not a porn star you know you know you could end up fucking them but yeah. at least at least you can just imagine all that there you go like the sculpture and getting a match on tinder is the exact same thing because you the beauty is added by you in your imagination and all you needed was like something to imagine about Right. Yeah. Because you don't have to deal with, uh, you know, because it could all go downhill from there. It's all it's like the Jaws movie, you know, like they never show you the shark because they know that if they showed you the shark, it'd be hilarious because the graphics would have been shitty and you'd be laughing. But because of the suspense, you don't know uh, fuck what the shark looks like. You fill that shit in with your imagination and then it's uh, ten times more terrifying. There you go. That's my take on it. All the special clip effects that shit. That's a us. fucking clip right there, bitch. Fucking clip. We're killing oh, the fucking shit. clip, bro. Second episode, the Pierre and Sabah show. We're oh, fucking God. Were we, were we lacking energy Hashtag. there? What's going on? <laughs> Hashtag intelligence. No, I'm just saying. Like, doing he's bragging already? about us. Hashtag I'm intelligence. ready for this, man. Um, um, yeah. 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 We're but rewriting I, history, bitches. Isn't, but I think that's true. Like... It does feel that way to me anyway. Like the best part, I don't know if that's cynical or not, but that's what I feel. Yeah. I haven't been, I haven't been on. You don't do online dates a lot. You you just go straight with like a in-person. I think that's the organic, that's a better way to do it. Like right? I don't know what, how it works anymore. Like I went back on Tinder when I got back to the UK after lockdown and like it was all young girls, just like Instagram, like young, like uh, girls yeah. in their, like let's say early to mid twenties, yeah. and it's the same kind of pictures now as like Instagram girls in their mid to to, to early twenties. It's just Instagram whore pictures, as I like to call it. It's like, I don't yeah. know. It's like it's uh, what's what's glad it's like glamour model shots. It's all glamour model shots. Yeah, totally. Well, and, that's what I don't know. Me. Already, I don't know what what like. So, what do you what do you want? Do you want to just see me on the other side with like a, a a suit and a car and a and money? Like, do you want no conversation? You're not giving me any conversation. Do you yeah. do you just want to see me like at, in a like a post gym workout picture and like a bulge in my underwear? Like, what are we what are we going for here? Well, if if they're showing you the Instagram model pics of the female side, then of course. By logic, I would think they want the same thing on the other side. So, like what you said is like the post gym pick, whatever dudes do to stunt with their. If it's like really basic, it's like your car and your watch. It's so gross, dude. I hate all that stuff. Like it's not so. It's not me at all. Maybe because I don't have any money, but like the whole car. But these girls like, don't have any money. They just have what they were born with. You know, like but that's just, their money. That's their money. That's their money. But here's the thing. I've been thinking about this. Is that not like not like a clash to feminism? You know, like like isn't that gonna make you kind of like a, a lazy species? Like like why? Because if you because half these people like as well, you meet them and and they don't have any conversation, and so it's kind of like um, the conversation is almost like, well, didn't you see didn't you see my Instagram pictures? Like right. I'm talking to you. Yeah. There's there's like fifty thousand likes here. I'm talking to you. What? You're not trying to impress me? Like what? Look, yeah. I'm not a sucker. Fifty like 50, I feel like it's the 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 
female equivalent to guys who are addicted to video games because they're the hero in their video games <laughs> and then they have no game outside in of real it. life yeah but, oh that's interesting women can get away with it because because oh. guys are dumber like because guys would, will be like well yeah well i just i just got a lot of money i'm good at getting money i don't have any real drive in life except for like yeah you're the well, you're what i hope i would get with that money hot pussy and like you want champagne <laughs> well uh, isn't that the you deal you make though? caviar well if you want to eat drink champagne and eat caviar as a 20 year old whether boy or girl but let's say girl you don't have any money chances are because your parents are probably not rich but you can get it for you you can get someone to pay that for you by using what you have, which is what? Which is a beautiful body. That's your currency. So I can yeah. see their logic. Like if I wanted to be on a boat, on a yacht, I want to go to a nice go on nice vacations or I want to I want to go eat at nice restaurants. A 20-year-old dude is not going to get that for you most likely because he doesn't have a job or money. So it's going to be the older guy who is again his thing was that He's probably 34 or whatever, and he's figured out how to make money, but he has probably no personality. But it doesn't matter because he's got what you don't have and what you want, and you've got what he wants. He's got money personality. He's, he's got, got money. Like, per- yeah, that's Wall what you're looking Street for. smarts. Yeah, that's what you're looking for. So, you know, boom. So it's a match made in heaven, really. But imagine the yeah. conversations they would have, though. Ugh. Ugh. Someone who and, can't and does, talk. like, pictures with that guy, does that, like, upgrade her? Does that, like, is that new currency? If she's, like, in his limo and there's a picture of her, her in her limo, it's like, I'm not just Instagram sexy. I'm fucking winning. Yeah. Like, it's, it's getting me shit. Give me some of that winning. And the guy also gets, he takes a picture with her. He's like, I'm also winning. Look at this hot chick I have. And she's also winning where she's like, oh, look at me. I'm in a limo somewhere. And she's winning because... It's all about the Instagram community. Everything is on there. So you are hiring your status by being in the limo and having that cool picture. Uh, you know, and so you're winning. Well, here's, here's, here's my thing is why, like, I think it might be um, – it might be against the cause for, for, for feminism and empowered women and stuff. Because, like, when I was teaching – at. You, you, you you know that and I see it I understand it now uh, after after having taught people in high school and now I look at certain friends and it's like the oh god um that guy who won with the money he at least had to be good <laughs> it's at something s- it's something he had to be good you know? at school for sure yeah he had to be good at school yeah yeah he had to have yeah. this drive he had to have this totally. compulsion to read people and and get what he wants from them oh yeah. That girl just need to know how manicured she was and just learn how that makes guys respond. It's also, yeah, yeah. But I also look at it as like an athlete. Their beauty is of an athlete from the age of like 18 to about what's like 29, I suppose, is like their peak performance years as like a yeah. be- and beauty. And beauty. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. It's their beauty. It's like that's their athleticism. That's their peak performance ears. Uh, and, you know, their beauty is – here's the thing, though. Their beauty is like fucking – it makes you want to be better. We're hardwired. It's hardwired to drive us Yeah, it is. crazy to, to like not romanticize, just, to be passionate. To... Yeah. It's not just uh, – it's not even just like, oh, I want to fucking come. It's more like – Man, I was just thinking, like, you see their beauty? It's it's awe-inspiring. It's that it's awe-inspiring. It really is. It's like, fuck, you're it's, beautiful. It's and marvelous. It They're makes a marvel. You, and you you feel like I I it just feels like man, I, I, what it's be, it's that beautiful. Yeah, it, you really it does make you feel. That's why I think Shakespeare wrote those those beautiful things it's because he kind of understood more than just like the fucking part of it is just beauty it's pure beauty and i was listening to something else beauty also reminds you of how inadequate you are by uh by like a indirect way well you i was thinking like that... it, it kind of makes our simplicity as men beautiful because like that guy 
who did well in class and, you know, d- became a savvy business guy because he, he, you know, he's going to get him. He's going to acquire that Marvel. He's going to get access to that Marvel. Yeah. It, it's like, it's like, you know, guys get, get shamed for being uh, objectifying. But I've always yeah. felt like, oh, God, if you could know how that felt, like maybe I'm a shallow fuck, but it, it, it feels like poetry. It feels like a yeah. wonder yeah. when I yeah. when I anticipate, when, when I think maybe I got a chance with this gorgeous ch- chance encounter of a, right. a, you know, this beautiful being. It is. It's. It's. It really. True beauty is. I mean, we try to say like every body is beautiful, and like you know, Instagram makes you. Instagram's funny where it like they tells you that oh, you know, you're beautiful the way you are, but also here's a picture of a the best butt you've ever seen. <laughs> like, <laughs> and all, and below is the caption of like oh, uh, everybody is beautiful. It's like, it's it's like a really hilarious like uh, what's that world where it's like uh, what's that word when you're it's like two things are opposite paradoxical yeah it's this paradoxical world where you can see someone who's physically like at the tip of like the the peak of beauty physical beauty and at the same time uh they will tell you some horseshit some self-help horseshit about everybody being beautiful because the rest of the people there's only very few that's the thing about beauty too it's not everybody's not beautiful that's why we covet it so much it's only few people get uh, are be- are genetically lucky enough to be beautiful, but the rest of uh, rest of the people are not beautiful. So in order to placate them and make them feel better, they have to put these platitudes of like, oh, everybody's beautiful though. You it, you don't have to have this beautiful ass that I have just I'm showing you. I'm pushing this in your face right now. You don't have to have that, but guess what? I have it. But also at the same time though, everyone's ass is beautiful just the way they are. But check out this like objectively amazing ass though it's like it's a hilarious world and i feel like oh man imagine if you're a young person just being subjected to that and we've to a degree have been but uh, to the later uh, aspect of it but if you're a teenager and you're looking at that shit it's so confusing but anyway uh but yeah uh, true beauty is something to behold man oh and uh, totally and if i if you had that beauty that's your resource and you would use the resources you had to get ahead, just like how the guy who we're talking about used his resources of his drive and his intellect, perhaps, uh, and his hard work. And that's what he had. And he 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 at least had the thought of like developing those qualities to get ahead. Uh, You know, so is uh, the beauty of uh, the physical beauty, the true peak physical beauty. Is that like bliss? Is that is that like the non-jewel when you when you you're not thinking about it you're just there with it i don't know if it's bliss i think it's just a fleeting pleasure but it is beauty mm. in the way that we see it and we experience it is most of it it's like the sculpture thing again it's do you ever wonder about that but that guy though the guy who's like really digging life and it might start it might start to to to, to you know be able to get himself that that Mona Lisa, that 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 Madonna, the, the, the you know, and but he he uncovers such a world in the process, such a world of of le- levers and pulleys and 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 games and systems within systems that he has to master and 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 build part of his brain around to to kind of harness uh, a way to maneuver it. Do you think it's? Do you think the luster? disappears like would the luster disappear after a while you would think you would think he'd become more wise bombshell like he's gotten it and and she can't relate to any of this this crazy world that he's kind of figured out in order to 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 impress those girls that never gave him the time of day back in high school and and i don't know is it somewhere like a man's calling as well to transcend that and go oh no but objects of the world have so much more in them smart than... smart dudes yeah you would think that yeah, I just guess the, smart dudes, huh? the, uh, the path to to that hard work and to reach that certain level of success to get the beauty of the the beautiful woman in that path you he would gain wisdom 
and really see the world for what it is where you might actually want to hang out with this person and have a conversation more to just physical beauty there's uh you know you want to have a, a beautiful person that you think is beautiful but you also realize that physical beauty is very fleeting uh, that's the thing about the beauty too is that the person who has it it goes away most people even they they have that beauty yeah that was interesting you said that like you think it lasts forever the people like who the, have it last athletes forever. in their prime the athletes, they have age limit like yeah, if we were chicks, we we would be like if we were hot chicks. We'd be milking, of course. Like like we knew we we knew that we kind of know there was a time like like not that women aren't beautiful when they you know hit their forties, fifties, sixties, but there's like a physical kind beauty. of insatiability yeah. effect on yeah. men, and we're kind of like hardwired for that. Totally. Whereas. Whereas men, it's not the same, is it? Like you always have women say, like, "Oh, it's not fair." Men kind of get hotter with with age, you know? Age. Yeah, yeah. It, they totally. That, that's the biological uh, cruelty. That's uh, that's. That's also you know. I feel like because women's women's uh, what women are attracted to is more complex. I was just thinking like that guy, you know, the guy that goes on the journey. <laughs> he's ignored, he's <laughs> ignored by. No, but I just feel like the what uh, part love, of trees? women are. Uh, women are fuckable and men are lovable. <laughs> oh, I was kind of thinking women. of um, Mike Burbig, like more in the realm of Mike Burbiglia. Is that his name? Burbiglia. Burbiglia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he kind of says like w- women's sexuality is more complex. I'll prove it to you. Women in the audience, have any of you ever jerked off while driving your car? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. But I also feel like you know the to that guy who's who's just overly impressed simply by a woman like women don't want him he's too easy you know the, the hot girl that guy's too easy like what else has he got he can't get over the, just how that's if you're smart if you're smart i am if you're uh, see it all depends if you're a guy there are some dudes i think who whose drive was to get the hot chick and so that drives them to be successful and then they finally get it that's what they they don't become wise as they as the journey goes or anything their goal was to get that and they fucking um, they want that. And then I think there's women at the same time who just want, they think that their beauty will last forever. Their insatiable beauty will last forever. Uh, and so, uh, they want the nicer things in life. They figured out, Oh, I don't have to work hard. Uh, you know, like other, uh, less pretty women. I can, I don't have to work at anything. I can just use this resource that I have to, to get what I want, which is the short term goals of the, the Instagram picture, the vacations and the, and the, uh, and the restaurants and whatever. I don't even know what uh, women get. Yeah. But... The guy that's like killing it, the guy that can offer that and is killing it. I think of like a uh, Dan Bilzerian. He's, yeah, yeah. he's also not, he's also letting these women kind of know they're a dime a dozen to him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. He's not are, fully, yeah. he's not entranced by them. He's just like, well, yeah, I'm at a certain level of luxury in my life and women that look like this are part of it. Cause yeah. But then the women are smart. Those women are actually smart. You know why? Because he has the, that Instagram clout. And if that's what you're chasing after as a pretty woman oh, and you want followers, you got to hang out with Dan Belzerian. That's the best way to, you so got to shoot guns with him in your underwear. Instagram game. He's like upgrade. He's, and, and he's, so that's he's smart. the big leagues. Yeah. If you're playing the Instagram game, exactly. He's the guy. You gotta be in your underwear and shoot guns with him. In order I'm to get not followed. just a butt on Instagram. I got sanctioned by Dan Belzerian. Player. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm at the, high entourage. I got proof. I got clout. Yeah. Because it's you know what's funny is that because it's not just enough to have an amazing butt. Now you have to differentiate yourself from all the amazing butts that anyone are there. Anyone could have an amazing, amazing butt. Amazing butt. Anyone at that level of having amazing butts, there's a dime a dozen. Gotta be able to butts, squat. So. You don't even need gym. You don't even need gym equipment. Hey, man, actually what we're figuring it's out is like YouTube. fucking Instagram hoes that we're shitting on, the thoughts that we're shitting on. Dude, they're working hard too. They have a hierarchy. They have to... It's a whole it. hierarchy, yeah. They have to be better. They have to be have the best. Not only have the best butts and do the squats and the and the, and the and the ab uh, whatever and the workouts and eat right and and you know whatever. They have to do those sacrifices. But at the same time, they have to be hot enough to get Dan Belzerian's attention because he's probably going to be able to figure him out. 
Yeah, and like you know, hang out with him, shoot guns with him, and then be and then just accept the facts that you're oh, in a hot tub with ten other chicks and you're not special to him. But you you're got doing a, this. Not just that hair flick. You got a master. Yeah, you, you, be you master have to be better than temple. anybody else. Yeah, you have to be better than all those all the other women in the hot tub. God damn. It's hard. Nobody knows that we don't know. Jesus Christ, that guy, that guy's access to some some real information. Hey. You real have wisdom. To respect, you have to respect what you don't know. You have to have some sort of being like, all right, tip my hat to you. You figure something out. Um, he should write a book. It's or his fun, father funny, figured something out and gave him money. I don't know what. Whatever. Funny coincidence. You mentioned his father. Um, his father's opening a stem cell clinic in Antigua. Oh. When I was last in Antigua, I was driving down one of the main, well, what's slowly becoming one of the main commercial roads. Right. And there's this thing, stem cell medical center. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, I mean, it doesn't surprise me. We're like the pirates of the, we are like the pirates for shady business of the Caribbean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's like, it's like, oh, it's cool. We're getting, we're getting stem cells. Like, who's right, that? And they're right. like, oh, it's, apparently it's that Bilzerian guy, his dad. I'm like, whoa. Yeah, he like escaped uh, America because he was uh, supposed to be in jail. And he and his brother both have like renounced American citizenship or something. And who the dad? The dad and this and one of the sons. Oh not, wow! Not Dan Belzerian, but there's another Belzerian, I think. Oh, and they've gone rogue. They've hidden all their money in the Caribbean islands, probably somewhere. They're and living the outlaw life. Totally, they totally the are. Real off road. And they're gonna live forever with stem cell. <laughs> yeah. They're like Rick in that Rick and Morty episode where they go to the arcade, and they play that game where you're. You, you, I don't know, Morty does it and he, he wakes up as somebody else yeah. and he's like a quarterback star of his, his uni. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. eventually he like dies at the end. He comes out, he realizes it's in the video game and then seconds yeah, and later, then, Rick And then Rick in. laughs at him, uh, which is the funny yeah. part. It's so cruel. And everybody's <laughs> around Rick going like, this guy's taking Bill off the grid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got no social security number. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, that show. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's, that's what the Belzerians are doing. Yeah. Oh shit, man! To have that much money, I guess, hundred million dollars or whatever, maybe more, is like, man, that's, 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 oh, that's life changing money. I would do stem cells too. Like you can, you know, just to have your body just last a bit longer as you get older, just repair itself quicker. TRT. You know, this is this is probably place. gross to mention. I don't know if he's this rich. But like maybe maybe what he's done of like uh, getting extradited from the U.S. not being able to go back maybe that's commendable because look what happens to the guys that try and stay in the U.S. and make it like rich enough and like they well stem like, cell research is like blocked there there's some sort of controversy no nah, but I'm talking about like the insiders clubs for the mega rich in the U.S. like Jeffrey Epstein and stuff oh right all right. that stuff maybe, maybe that's why he got out maybe he started to get close to that number and he's like. I don't want to be accountable with these other crazy motherfuckers. I'm getting out. I'm going off road. You can come find me, bitches. Yeah. But I'm living. But he probably did steal a lot of his money. Probably he was that corp hostile uh, takeover guy. You know, like they'll they'll buy a company and they'll just fire everyone and gut it, and, and you know, and then make it profitable. But like through really ruthless like measures. Jeez. It's like that kind of. That kind of stuff. And then he probably did some shady shit too, which is why he was wanted <laughs> by the American <laughs> government. But uh, I don't know. I think we were talking at a school here. I don't really know much about it. but uh, No, I don't know much about it either. Mm. Did work for a company in Antigua. It, was, it felt like it was run by the kind of guy that would gut a company and sell it again. <laughs> uh, there was, it was like internet casino, online gaming stuff. Yeah. Oh God, I feel scared saying this because it was run by Israelis. <laughs> the scary uh, Jews. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> not, not the oh, Nebuchadnezzar God. Woody Allen Misha, types, but the ones that are killing. If you're hearing me now, my mom's partner is Israeli. If you're hearing me now, I'm not talking about you. <laughs> yeah. But um. Yeah. So, they, they, I heard rumors like when I joined the company that they did things like they came, they opened up in the basement of a. Uh, of an accounting firm building and then two years later they filed for bankruptcy had to let everyone go and then reopened like reestablished the company under a different name a year later because it's illegal to uh, declare bankruptcy and then resurface so quickly and they invited back all their old staff members but they like 
told them because we've just because it's, we went solvent or whatever and and this is a new company yeah you can work with us but you'd have to start at the bottom again so basically like recycled the wage oh. cap wow. yeah <laughs> yeah those bastards it was smart, like, i guess like yeah shit. and even like while i was working with them there was no more israeli guys in the antigua branch but i noticed they had a system of uh promotion that was based on snitches so the way they they worked to leave Antigua Antigua's in charge of the Antigua branch is they just made sure to like get the guys at the top so they're all so policing each other that they, they don't really go that far in terms of the power power pyramid. Jeez. It was it was shady, man. It was weird. It was a funny place to work though. Yeah, I I like. It's funny how I also worked in a shady place, but in a much 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 smaller capacity. I had this job in New York for like one summer where I worked for like this Israeli dude again, but of American, but he was American and he did pest control. So basically he just, uh, he had one room in an office building uh, with a secretary in the same room and he would just uh, sell pest control, uh, you know, services. And because it's New York City, there's a lot of pests everywhere. There's bed bugs, rats, there's roaches, all kinds of pets, uh, pests that you have to deal with. And so what he would do is he would just buy the uh, – he had one or two, I think three or four people work for him who are the actual pest control guys. He never actually did the pest controlling himself. But what he did was he just owned domain names and a bunch of phone numbers. <laughs> so like every every neighborhood in Brooklyn, he had like Greenpoint. He had Greenpoint Pest Control, Sun, Sunset Park Pest Control, oh, uh, shit. you know, uh, Bushwick Pest Control. Uh, every every tiny neighborhood in Manhattan and Brooklyn, he had all their pest control, uh, the domain names uh, registered under his name. And he bought uh, the Google uh, search engine optimization, the SEO thing. So oh, where like wow. your company name always shows up first. And um, based on that, I think Google gets paid or whatever. So he bought that service. And so he would just and so he'd have a million people calling him every day and he would schedule the appointments and he wouldn't really he would the way he would do it is like the way and you would do it in Canada, I suppose, is like you have a pest control issue in order to get a quote, you would uh, ask first and then a quote will be given for you. But he would just give a quote on the phone. And people would just like be like, okay, fine. So uh, based it's like on bidding, bidding for, for so their yeah. Pest so people would search. call, people would call, and uh, he would just uh, say that. Oh, uh, he would just assess from where they called. Okay, so if they're calling from Harlem, Shit. and he figured out that they're either black or like Hispanic or Indian, if it's from Jackson Heights from Queens, he would lowball them because they know that they're cheap. <laughs> So and because other otherwise like they would never get uh, you know he never wants to get the services. gig yeah. so so ah. so he would lowball them but if it was like a white person from Greenpoint so Brooklyn counted. yeah if it was a white person from Greenpoint Brooklyn he would uh, he would give them a big number and they would have they would say yes and so based on like the appointments of that day and uh, how much they pay they're willing to pay the guy would uh, who was pe- doing the actual pest control part. He would go, and so if it's like, oh, uh, 100 bucks to get rid of a rat problem in Harlem, he, the guy would literally do a shit job, like a, you know, he'd really, literally put a piece of paper over the hole where the rat comes out of because it's like 100 bucks. It's not wor- way, uh, you know, worth his time. Not but, worth all the product. And yeah, but if it was like the white person from Brooklyn uh, and it was like $1,200 for a bed bug thing, uh, you know, the job would be relatively well done, you know, and he would spray everywhere and there would be a better protocol for it. And inevitably, the people who got the hundred dollar job would be like, fuck it, my rats haven't gone yet. And you said a free uh, checkup and inspection. He's like, and they'd be like, no, sorry. Uh, you know, oh, shit. you paid for a hundred dollars. That's what you get for a hundred dollars. And if it's a twelve hundred dollar job, then he if it's a twelve hundred dollar job, he would uh, you know give them uh, a, like a checkup or whatever. And then what he would do is he would like schedule all the appointments. And if it if your job was not worth that much money, he would just not show up that day, because oh, it's no. like I'm going to show up to twelve hundred dollar job, then the nine hundred dollar job, but the hundred dollar job I'm not going to do at all. And so people would be mad and call. And so that was my job was to listen to these like people who are like oh, no. really mad and they're like angry and they al- already paid uh, money for it which is a like hundred bucks but it was like really shit service and oh, so you're man. like the indian guy on the phone is like the staller guy well they didn't know i was indian you know i was i, I, I sounded true. like this 
Uh, and so I was just like sorry. a guy. That's just totally like, hey. racist. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, that was racist on your part. Uh, but yeah. uh, but I would just uh, listen to them, and then and then I was thinking through the eyes of like him, you know, the, your employer. <laughs> oh, but well, he just wanted a guy who would work for him. Yeah, he didn't care. Oh my god. Uh, yeah. So, so, and he was not even that much older. He was like maybe a, maybe a year older than me. And he, what was funny was people would threaten to sue. So he would pretend to be the his own lawyer, and call himself a different <laughs> name, put you on hold, and then he would like be, he would he'd be like, hey, check this out. So this person's trying to threat, uh, sue me. So he's like, all right. So I'm just gonna, yeah, okay, sir. So I'm just gonna put you through to our legal department. And then he'd he'd be like a different guy uh, in the legal department, and he'd be like, okay, yeah, uh, we we can I can threaten we can go to court if you want. So uh, you know we have our legal team here, and uh, if you want to waste your time, I can go to small claims court with you. I don't care. And so he would actually threaten to uh, put them on hold like a really long time, take other calls while. While they were on hold, uh, and he had, a, he, had a he had a whole system, and then at the same at that and and then if they did want to go to court, if some people did go to court, he would, uh, uh, you know, not he would be like, okay, and they would set a court date, not show up, and so they would have wasted, they would have taken a day off work, they would have paid a lawyer, uh, they had to pay lawyer fees, and then and then he would just pay the fine.
was like I was wondering about like um oh now the diets are are trendy mm-hmm. um is it more of a a positive effect or negative effect that people just kind of compete in the kitchen like you just trying to take care of yourself and eat right is also just like you making a statement uh, and someone yeah. else has got to top you like yeah. after that is that like uh is that a sign of progress that like our, our problems are so menial that we're now competing over like who who's the who is the healthiest diet trends yeah <laughs> yeah yeah or <laughs> <laughs> or like is, is that the problem of humans is that like no matter how much we progress we've got to like put some kind of savagery around even the best shit <laughs> that's why we can't like things are the best they've ever been we still can't get we like we the most disconnected from each other because what we're, we're fighting over is is like who's the healthiest actually that is good yeah man if i if you it's like a, if the bear shits in the woods uh, and if no one's there to hear it, did it really make a sound or whatever it is? What, what's yeah. that? If like, if you made an amazing meal and you did an Instagram about it, does that meal really <laughs> <laughs> have any value? <laughs> if I made an amazing meal just to be more personable and a better human being to like conquer my gut biome and shit and all it does is make people want to compete with me, should I just kill myself? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> man. It's like, fuck what should I do? Do I just let myself regress? It's just like, ugh. Man, the whole thing of competition, right? Yeah, it's like you got to compete to have the best, uh, the best meal, the best. Well, it's good if that, if you're actually trying to improve your gut biome and you're trying and to it's, improve it's your... It's good if the competition is like going somewhere. If like it's, it's a, leading to something. If it's healthy competition. You know? Yeah. Yeah. If, if, if it's progressing some kind of cause. Yeah. Maybe that's the best we can do to progress any cause. So like how deep your yoga stretch is. I, I can do my yoga stretch deeper than you. At least these <laughs> motherfuckers are breathing better. And and yeah. and uh, like, yeah, I think more it's, flexible. It, I suppose um, it uh, – the process of the competition will at least make you better at breathing or better at cooking or uh, better or does at – does that stunt the spiritual – Mm. like uh it definitely yeah positive aspect of it it's like you're getting better at that one particular thing but because you're not doing it completely in the correct spirit you are actually not uh honoring it entirely you're douchifying that that undertaking you're instagramming that shit you're oh my God. you're bringing that instagram thing I, i'm sorry we're going to instagram all the time but that seems to be like it's, no it's it's good it's a great way to say it i think because yeah. everything is instagrammed now you know for the, the computers for, have already won <laughs> ai has already won yeah we are it does feel like a for ourselves anymore rudimentary form of uh we're so of, dumb that like technology had to reach phones before ai won <laughs> Yeah, I think that Instagram does feel like what's that like a rudimentary form of what's the game you can play as like a character, virtual oh. reality. Yeah, like well, you know, like virtual reality. Yeah. Like you're living in that world. Yeah, yeah. That's the world. That's the world that counts. That counts, and especially with COVID, you can't go out anymore. You can't do real things. That's the only. That's the only way. And so what happens is you are virtue signaling with like cooking the best meal for your gut biome and uh, doing the yoga stretches for the for the benefits of like oh you know uh, getting more flexible and knowing yourself better but really it's also stroking your ego with like the aspect of getting likes and comments and followers and and you're actually uh, you know doing it for the re- for ulterior reasons you're not doing it for the right reasons uh you just don't want to be left behind just yeah yeah and also it's not you want something to do and you want something to be good at and you want people to to uh to say that you're good at it and you have and you know what the thing about social media and stuff is that you get to see the numbers and the likes like it's not like you know if you tell a group of people your friends it's like everyone comp oh that's good man great for you but it, it's never like ooh, 15 people like this it's more like, oh, generally people seem to like it. And, you know, so I think that also gives us that dopamine, like, rush. 
And yeah, I don't think it's fully honoring if it's a competition where, oh, I want to be the best at making the best soup for gut biome health, then I don't, yeah, maybe you're not. Like, what's it worth if people are if it doesn't make me more popular? Yeah. Oh, people Ugh. didn't like it. Say you did make like this amazing meal that's great for gut biome, uh, but for some reason people didn't like it. And if you think that, oh, fuck, that was a bullshit thing, I'm not going to cook that meal again because social media didn't like it enough, then you're not really about gut biome. You're more about social media. Gut biome is just a vehicle for popularity on social media. Right? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, don't you better not have too much fucking information. <laughs> Screw you with your like better information that kept me out of the club of winners. Fuck you, Mr. Oh, I didn't know this about it. You think that's yeah. smart? Well, I'm gonna go Google something else you didn't know about, it, which made my suit better again. Yeah, and that's why there's like 10 million opinions out there, and they're all fucking yeah. everyone's right or wrong. It doesn't nobody asks for the truth, they just fucking <sighs> just want to yeah. clan. Nobody's curious. If we were all fucking smart, we'd all be out there spinning in our own fucking heads, you know? Being like, what? This might be the best way? That might be the best way? This might be the best way? Well, which one do I try? And how, how? when do I stop trying? And this is a fucking... The, the person who's blessed is the person who just sees ones and goes, I like this one. This one's the best. The rest I'll can shut up. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like... Yeah, I don't know. I think... So that's the Jesus complex in me again, suffering for my cause. Your co- Oh, yeah, you said a cause. I think the Suffer- cause... Suffering for my truth. It's your truth, right. Truth litmus test. I don't know. Yeah. I think if you are... If you do have a cause, the cause should just be, I just want to do this to just do this. Simplify it that, uh, that way first. I just want to make this soup because... I just want to make the best soup that I can for the best gut health that I can. With the yeah, best I just want to know that what that feels like. Oh, yeah. I heard all this and this and this. I could use that. That would make me happier. But just I, not in relation to other people, but just in relation to myself. Self, yeah, because that's what it ultimately is. You. I want to know what it's like to be that yeah. free from my gut biome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? It's important. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of like trying to attach it to like, oh, now I have to spread this message about the best gut biome soup. Oh. Uh, I mean, but that's the money effect, isn't it? Like, I feel like there's not enough things left that humans really need to be getting paid for, and that humans really need to be contributing to the world. So now it's just like, oh, if you if you if you if you have anything good for you that you're involved in is at all, you should you should probably monetize it because. So much of the rest of what we do is kind of like futile at this point. Because, you know, that's the whole thing. Of, but because we are fed this message of like, do what you love and make your passion your paycheck or whatever it yeah, is. Yeah, but then artists aren't, are, are, most artists aren't going to get paid much, right? Yeah, they're not going to get paid much. So um, if you don't have some job that's just crunching numbers for some corporation that sells some product that perpetuates usually some stupid attitude towards something. <laughs> 